in the Riot host broadcast team. I'm sorry, Rusty and Benji. Hell and me, yeah. I guess. It's Corn and Egypt. Where did that come from? That is just... How do you follow up these hellos? I just don't know what to say. I'm just like... Every time, I'm just like... I'm just going to look him in the eyes and I'm just going to say, Hi, Nick. Yeah. And hey, then Nick. this happens. How's it going, bud? I got to peak the energy because you guys are so flat. We just plummet it <laughs> every... We just drive it into the ground. You're right. It's our fault. Yeah. I apologize. My coffee is just randomly sitting here. Still. <laughs> It's our fault. We are the problem. You it's... guys are the problem. How are you yeah, doing? Okay. What? Are, uh, here's my question. How do we top yesterday? Because yesterday, Ooh. I went mm. to bed buzzing. I was like, that was a great That was a great night of league. Yeah, it was. And now, what have we got to look forward to? Nothing. <laughs> we have lots of great games today. I feel like if we're anywhere close yep. to the competitiveness, competitiveness of yesterday's games, mm. then today's going to be a bloody banger. Because yep. yesterday was a bloody banger. True. That's what I want. That's what I want out of today. How about you? I actually want... Three good games and one really one-sided. <laughs> just a really <laughs> quick, yeah. Yeah. just a quick, very clean cut, you yeah. know, clinical victory just victory of probably Legacy over Mammoth. That would be <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, of course, we do have many games on for you tonight. Let's four take maybe a look at the schedule. Four mm. maybe, but spoilers. I oh, know it is four. Uh, so first up, we have Order versus Gravitas. I mean, the boys are on the couch. There is skin in the game on that couch. Uh, next up, we got Vomits versus Chiefs. Then Mammoth versus Legacy, and we rounded out with Avant versus Die Wolves. So, uh, before we get to the tipping though, a reminder that you can watch all those games on lol.esports.com if you want Blue Essence. I love Blue Essence. Emotes. Emotes. Uh, XP. XP. And icons. And, and RP boosts. Uh, XP boosts. XP boosts. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Do you know what? Emotes are probably the best update to League of yeah. Legends ever. What's on your wheel? What's on my wheel? Uh, Garen, top. Uh, of oh. course. Uh, the just stupid Garen head. Then monkey with Coco. Like, okay. you know, and I use that one when someone tries to gank me and I don't die. And I'm like, no, my, my, my life. Yep. And then <laughs> I have life. mic drop when like I make a really good Is play. Is that Kaisa? Uh, no, it's Akali. Akali, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. KDA Akali. And then left is Snowman Power, I think. Okay. And then middle, just thumbs up. Okay. I got middle thumbs up. Thumbs up is a classic. You've got yeah. to have that. I've got Angry B that's like, yeah. like uh, on the top one. I have, what do I have? I have the Penguin Dab. Uh, penguin I've Dab. Got, oh, pen awful. Penguin Dab is definitely a basic one. Awful. But then I've got the, the Smiling Braum and the last one I'm blanking on. No, I have the Gingerbread Man with the moustache. Oh, that's like actually that, a good like, one. Top sorry tier. about that. The, like the Braum moustache is a banger. Where's your Garen? I don't play Garen because I'm not a troll. No, also, the... Jake doesn't play Garen anymore because it was true. his fourth rule. That's yeah. true. Bad luck. The Garen emote, though, is a very good it's emote. He's got a cheesy What's the Garen, Garen emote? Uh, he's just real happy, just <laughs> real smiley. It's like for the first time in his life. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, before we get into the schedule, uh, the roster, sorry, we got spicy tips. Mm. Yeah, because uh, yesterday it was three way. <laughs> it was a lot of chili. Three way tongue tie. Mm. And that was. Uh, I, what, here's what I've learned I don't handle chili very You're well. the worst one. I thought I was going to be the worst one, but you're the worst like, one. I cry every time. <laughs> I had stuff coming out of my nose. I was just a red hot mess. Yeah. This Lucky you had some. Nice A2 milk on hand. It's actually the best segment I think we've ever <laughs> done to the show. Let's take a look at the tips we have set up for today. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so it's all on the first two games. Yeah. Oh, I'm the only one that picks Chiefs. Yeah, that's risky. Yeah. Especially after what we saw well, from Chiefs yesterday. Yes, but the thing is, I did my tips before yesterday. Yes. Like, See, I did the, this is what I'm I did talking the weekend about. tips like before we saw yesterday. Yep. And so I was like, hmm, like Bombers, Chiefs. I was impressed with Chiefs. Like and Your boys struggled against Diables as well. So even tipping your boys this time around, because you are a flip-flopper on your own team. <laughs> but I mean, struggling against Diables and going into a red-hot team look, coming off a I'm, clean victory versus the Chiefs, look, that's going to be you a know what I'm nervous expecting one for you. From game one is like order, just first pick Jace, and just there you go, that's it. That's you know what I'm <laughs> expecting from Gravitas? Just the classic Seguardi Galio 2v2 mid lane. Here's what I'm worried about. Uh, the Gravitas tippers are... The uh, coach of Gravitas, mm -hmm. Pyra, who's terrible at this, <laughs> and me. And so suddenly I'm like, what have I done? Uh, but Pyra's we'll... turned it around. Has he? Well, he's won he, once. He, he's won once. Yeah. Once. So yeah. he's got a 33% win rate. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, he had a 0% win rate before the that's, 33%. That's, that's, true. Win. that's a turnaround. That is a massive turnaround. Uh, let's take a look at game number one, though, because we do have Order versus Gravitas. Normally we would switch this around. Normally, uh, you would be running through the team that you don't... I was going to say own, but Juve's owns you. Uh, the, <laughs> that you coach. But let's actually go with uh, your boys. So let's start it off, uh, though, with Jake. Jake, who have you brought? 
Surprise us with your new lineup. Exactly right. It's going to be a new bunch. The boys from Melbourne Auto is going to be Choo Choo's as their coach. Tally in the top lane ran over Swiper yesterday. Spooks mm-hmm. and Swiffer in the mid jungle duo. And of course, Dream and Jake, the new bottom lane, looking to cement themselves as a staple on this lineup. Both of them signed two year contract as for the global contract database. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's. I, it's good to see some organisations investing in the longevity. I think Only was the first person. He was on a two-year contract with Legacy. Mm-hmm. Obviously, must have been bought out. I don't know the technical details or traded or something to the Chiefs Esports Club. But I, I like the fact that players are now getting multi-year deals. Yeah, it's super interesting. Like, it hasn't been a thing, especially in smaller regions like, yeah. like O's for a very long time. But change like that can be, can be, very, can be very profitable. An order coming in off the win yesterday. I assume the boys are feeling pretty good, particularly Dream, because you know he's. This was the first win for him back in the OPL mm. uh, under the new regime. So uh, regime. how's he feeling? I like regime. That, that accurately describes the team. I feel, uh, I feel <laughs> like that accurately describe, describes you and the way that you operate. Absolutely. Uh, I think yeah, Dream. Actually, like, so the thing was, is he fell down, like, really early in laning phase with 0-3, but then stuck to it and, like, climbed his way back out of the hole and, like, really did his job well. And I think there's something to say about, like, just doing your role mm. and then getting success out of it. So I think that guys felt really good. It's really nice to get a win over the Chiefs the second time that we've beaten them uh, as an organization. And I think, you know, to have it so clean after a 20-minute mark... Oh! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> was nice. Nice. <laughs> okay. 2-0 Vayne into Galio, 4-0 Kaisa. Clean game. Was that, was, that what, after 20 minutes? So 2-0 after 20 minutes? I don't know minutes? the time exactly. But well, we like, got Baron there was, and then didn't lose a team fight for the rest of the yes. game. So I'd say that's pretty clean. I will say a Vayne Kaisa did walk into the Galio without the flash being used. So... Clean. Oh, so it was very second. close. So it me... was very close. So Mammoth oh, played. Oh, you know I get serious when Jace so Hurst is back on, on the couch. So Gravitas played perfect League of Legends. None no, of your players have no, ever walked no, into a tort. No. Oh. But I'm not sitting here saying the that was the cleanest but Gravitas victory I've ever seen, which is... Oh, look, you know what? Let's let's just shit on Oceania as a region <laughs> then. Oh, let's do that. <laughs> Top two team, <laughs> lost to Order. You know what? Let's not say anything positive about Order. Chiefs, how dare you make mistakes? <laughs> a shame. Of course, we need to move on. Uh, yes. And we have another team. It's not just auto playing. Uh, Gravitas had a good mm-hmm. game yesterday as Did well. Did they? It was pretty shocking. I feel like after 20 minutes, it was pretty clear. <laughs> I feel like it was pretty clear. <laughs> By good, I mean you won. Yes. Yeah. That's we a we good can both game. claim that. Yeah, we got, yeah. We got yep. a point. Got the w. Both, both of you mm-hmm. struggled through your games. Mm-hmm. But uh, Bryce, how about you talk us through who you brought today? I assume it's the same as not. Yeah, it's going to be exactly the same. The boys from Melbourne, also in Gravitas. Drew, six foot tall, is going to be standing behind them. Pabu, you saw him in the intro. Beat Double Lift, beat Rookie, beat Faker at All-Stars. And now he's going to beat Jake Spawn Tiberia on the rift, hopefully. Prelis is going to be in the jungle POV stream as well. Today, Superstar in the mid lane, Harry. Superstar in the AD carry position, Raid. And Superstar, again, in the bottom lane with Raid is decoy. Well, I'm looking forward to this game. By the way, I'm just reading the chat right now. Halo underscore one says, Mum and Dad, please don't fight. Yeah, uh, that's so all right, Halo. We, we still love you. Uh, I like your jackets. Yeah. To what oh, I was yeah, actually going nice. to say. Can we go back to the player games? I don't know if you have the technology. Uh, but I really, hey. big fan. Like, it's kind of a cross between like a windbreaker and like a normal jacket. Mm-hmm. Like, looks kind of light, but also looks pretty warm. Which is good because that room is absolutely yeah. freezing. Yeah. So it can get probably a good choice. pretty cold. Uh, before I throw it over to Castle Desk, a quick reminder, we've got the Twitter POV stream. We're going to be checking out now, Prelis all game. So if you want to see what Prelis is up to, head to twitter.com forward slash OPL and you can check that out. Something else you can check out though. Uh, the second coolest people <laughs> as part of the casting team for the OPL. It's Rusty and Benji. Thanks, Nick Boy. Second coolest could also be hottest in the OPL. <laughs> Rusty's joining me here on the desk. Yeah, hi. Now, they've brought up uh, a few words there that you made note for me. Superstar, I yeah, think, I is just, what came up for, from your perspective. I love the use of the word superstar. Sure. This is something that has always been said in League of Legends, and I just... There is no way that a team has three superstars and has losses right now with three games played. That's all I'm going to say. There is a good player, there are great players, there are stars, and then there's LeBron James's, and there's not three of them in Gravitas right now. They could be in the future, but not right now. Absolutely. Jumping into Champ Select, there may be uh, a few superstars on Avant la- later as well. They play in our uh, last game future, of the day. But in not the future, <laughs> but for now we're jumping into Autoverse Gravitas. First game of the day, it is week two, day two. I'm actually excited for today. Yesterday's games were like actually probably the best OPL games I've seen in 12 months at least. Like it was a fantastic day. And I think these teams are now warmed up and hopefully we get some more great games today. Hitting the bands already, Rusty, in this first game. That's Akali, that's Aurelia, that's Lucian already mm-hmm. on the bench. Cassiopeia Gallio, pretty standard bands here. 
And Aatrox, of course, the last one to follow, which means that Urgot will be the big one that you look at as the first pick. Not going to be super surprised to see that yeah. locked in by order when you look at Tally's performance yesterday. He had a big carry showing for himself. Very impressive stuff coming out of the top laner of yeah. order. So no surprises to see that one immediately locked in. Also not a surprise to see the big tank, the big juggernaut locked in in response by Papi. Absolutely. That's a very quick lock-in for Urgot as well. That didn't require any discussion they had. Uh, you know, a bit of time to sit and consider and think about it. But Tally was just like, bang, this is what it is. Pabu, like uh, like mentioned, Scion and Ezreal locked in. That's a that's an early. We haven't seen much Ezreal so far this split, Rusty. No, there hasn't been a whole lot of Ezreal. He's always been very much in favor. If you look at other regions like Korea, Ezreal does seem to be a very strong champion. Just doesn't seem to always find the most success available to the pick when seen in other regions. So. It's not a big surprise to see it locked in. Again, it's a very safe champion. If you lock it in early, not a lot of things will outright kill it in lane. But there are still lanes that can beat it in the yeah. 2v2. And we're yet to see what the supports are, however, and that does mean a big deal. Yep, there we go. Lissandra locked in for order with uh, Kaiser as well. So there's the two solo laners you'd imagine with Urgo and Lissandra. Mm -hmm. The thing about them is you can play them actually in either lane. They can kind of flex those around. Absolutely. Do you think there's a, with uh, knowing Tally and Swift as pools, do you think there's a, a preference there or do you think it can go either way? I feel like it, the preference would be Swift on Lissandra, Tally on Urgo, especially if you take yesterday into account. But you are correct, they can absolutely swap and at the same time Dream gets his Kaiser. So a lot of preference down there on the pick for the bottom lane and something that has been Honestly, popping off a bit in the OPL is that Kaiser pick. Absolutely. Rakan picked up here for Gravitas. So, looking at what's open right now, Gravitas need a solo laner and a jungler, and Order need a jungler and a support. So, you imagine the jungle pool here could get pinched during this ban phase, try and set that up as it obviously does sort of restrict what can be played. Alistair hitting the bench initially for Gravitas, looking to deny a bit of engage perhaps on the side of Order. Yeah, could see some supports taken off the board. It's given that the Rakan is already secured, you could see the Xin Zhao potentially even focused away from Spook, something that he's been very much loving right now. He'll be able to play that whenever he can. We'll see where he goes, because it's not the Xin Zhao Galio combo by any means. The Galio has already been removed by Gravitas. Yep, it is. Uh, Morgana. The second ban here for Gravitas. Zoe taken off for order, so trying to restrict Hayri's uh, champion pool a little bit here. Probably suspecting Pabu on Scion. I think that's a pretty safe assumption to make as well. Uh, with this meta, though, I, I don't like to conf confirm anything until I see the full lineups. So anything can move around. Yeah, and, that's uh, the beauty of this patch. So many flex picks available. No one knows where anything's going until all five champions are locked. That's one of the advantages that red side does tend to get at moments. Blue side has to pick those flexes usually in their first rotation, or they have something either super high priority or they're just trolling a little bit in the draft. Yep, Hayri being pitched down a little bit here. So it looks like Gravitas and Order both need junglers, but they didn't really touch the jungle pool uh, after that first ban phase. Actually, they haven't really touched it at all. So kind of everything's open here. The question is, if you're Gravitas, do you try and pick that solo laner now? It looks like they're leaning towards it. Or do you use, and you say the jungle counter pick? Or yeah, how I, do you play? when you've got a player like Prelus and you've seen the champions that he's been rocking on Summoner's Rift already, don't be too shocked to see him get the last pick and try and be the counter in his role at the very least. You know, mm. now Spooks has to blind lock his jungler. He'll probably pick something that's good in the comp, but just an outright strong jungler in its own right. Prelus gets the counter. He's already played the Evelyn. There's a lot of other picks available to him. I'm curious to see where he goes. Absolutely. Syndra is the lock-in here. Syndra uh, probably looking at Lissandra there, trying to pick a decent match up there. Braum being locked in here by order. That's their support. So now we're just waiting on the two junglers. Uh, so we're looking at the solo laners here. You kind of expect Lissandra versus Syndra and then Urgot versus Sion. We've seen that match up quite a bit uh, this weekend already. Yeah. Uh, and this patch actually quite a bit of as well. Mixed results with the matchup as well. A lot of times you would say that Sion has a pretty good experience up there, but Urgots have been getting kills left, right, and center. So, uh, final champion is going to be locked in here for order. A bit of a snatch and grab style champion. Good engage for the team as well. It could be complemented brilliantly by the composition that order has compiled for themselves. If they're able to get into the backline, get the engages off. Very slippery comp against them, however, at times. Zach is. Uh also got some pretty nice uh, ganked places. You've got to get decent wards up for him as well. The standard wards don't really work as well. And Xin Zhao taken for Prelus. So that's a that's a, a champion you see spooks on quite a bit. And it looks like Prelus is going to show him what's to go. And I always find that very interesting when you see a player that's uh, very proficient on a champion. And, and they're also good playing against it because they know the weaknesses and the power spikes for it. So uh, that's a bold pick by Prelus. We'll have to see how that plans out for him. For sure, and of course, when you've got a Zac locked in, Prelus looks at the list and he sees the opposing jungler and says, well, it's not a level 6 spike, it can still be a level 5 spike on a champion like Zac. I want to be stronger earlier. Absolutely. I want to influence the lanes. He may go towards the Hail of Blades build as well and just get into the fray as soon as possible, get those big ganks off and 
start snowballing before the Zac can even get ganks off. Or you can just go hunting, go and find him. You know, if the Syndra can get some lane control, if the Scion can, then maybe you've got some topside focus. That's what I would expect here from Gravitas as well, with an Ezreal and a Rakan. It's not the most dominant bottom lane by any means. They should be playing fairly heavily around their jungler and getting him very much enabled on the rim. Absolutely. Now, keep in mind, Prelus is our POV stream. So if you want to see that Zinzao versus Zac matchup, that's probably the best place to catch that. Obviously, we'll look at it a little bit here on the main stream. But if you want to hyper-focus on that, you want to learn some jungle pathing, that's the way to do it. As I speak, actually, the coach of Gravitas has joined us on here. Jews, welcome back. Yeah, I feel like being on here and having an interview on here is my lucky charm. So, like, thanks for having me again. You win every time you're yeah, on here. Yeah, I think so. Well, I've only done it. Have I done it once? I think I've done it once. No, I lost. We lost once too, actually. 50% win rate. Ah. Yeah. We'll see if we can get up to 66 yeah. today, of course. Uh, how do you feel about the draft, just overall? Yeah, like, we're, we're happy with it. Um, you know, we have strong strong mid 2v2, and I feel like Auto heavily relies on them, this, those two specifically, doing very well. So, yeah, I'm happy. Like, without giving too much away, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I like our champions. We're good at our champions. Um, and the priority and, and whatnot is in our favor, so we'll see. And of course, for Raid now playing the Ezreal, does love himself a bit of a carry, but how is his wrist actually holding up for him individually? Is he okay? I've looked after him. I've looked after him real well. I've taken him to a few of um, Film My Connections, you know, to, to get that, that sorted. So he's doing real well in that department. So it's, no, not to worry, his Ezreal will be clean. That's what we need. Uh, fair enough. Uh, also looking at Auto's lineup. Uh, nothing really surprising out of them. Is there anything that you saw on that side that you were like a little bit surprised by? Or is it pretty much just a standard comp? Like, the Zac seems kind of weird because we've seen a lot of Zin Zhao for spooks. Like, going through the draft, is that normal for you? Do you kind of expect this? Um, I think, like, what we see from Order here is, is like, what to expect, really. I think I think Order is one of those, like, kind of linear teams at the moment where, like, you go into a game and they're the polar opposite of, say, AV or something like that, where they're just going to pick anything and everything. Um, and then when you when you verse Order, you know, like, it's standard, standard champions. Yeah. This is how we're going to play. This is how we're going to pick ban. And so, um, like, again, looking at their comp, it's, it's, I, I don't look at it and think, like, damn, that was a curveball. It's pretty, pretty what was expected. And I think, honestly, it just comes down to um, who pushes the pace and who dictates, dictates the pace of the early game. And speaking towards both of these teams as well, yesterday there were some shaky early game starts, mid lane as well for you guys against that Yasuo. In this game, then, how much did you dictate before it, speaking towards early game strength, getting the leads and seeing if you can shore up those weaknesses, or was it just focusing on the individual game plan? I think it's just focusing on the individual and becoming comfortable. Like, again, it's the second week of OPL, so it's still normal to have stage nerves and have, I guess, scrappy early games. Um, and so I think, like, you know, with the tools in, that we have in this draft, is that if there is a scrappy early game, then, you know, it probably, it probably does favor us. So, um, yeah, like, you know, it's just about settling in still. It's still a very long season. And you, I guess some teams, too, are just figuring out what works and what doesn't work. I know that's for scrims, but also um, you got to do some of it on stage sometimes. Yeah. So that's how it is. My last question for yep. you. Uh, yesterday, you guys obviously got a, a nice win. Uh, do you sort of keep you guys G'd up for this game today, or do you try and come down and reset them? I think it's it's bad to just be switched on all of all of the time. To be switched on 100% of the time is just bad. Um, and so you need to find the balance as a player as to like how to switch off, what what makes you calm down, like what switches off, what what switches you off, I guess, in terms of like is that going for a walk, having a coffee, and just not being in game mode all unwinding. day. Unwinding. Yeah, unwinding. Yeah. So um, I guess with young players and and whatnot, it's just up to them to figure out what works. Like you might have some weeks where they just feel they're, they're, they're on, on edge all the time and they're not really, really focused. And I think it just comes down to repetition and, and, and figuring out what works for you. There's no like magic, you do this and you're switched off. You do this and you'll play well. It's just, yeah, it's just case by case scenario. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Juice. Best of luck in the game, and hopefully you guys can put up a good performance here against Water. Thank you. All right, Rusty, having a look at this game, we've had uh, a few minutes here of, of laning phase. Nothing crazy's happened so far. Anything that sort of jumped out at you that you found interesting? Uh, nothing significant. I think, actually, you know, Juice is pretty on the money saying that it should be a standard start for their opponents. And when you looked at the draft and we explored what it could do from the side of Gravitas, you'd say perhaps strong early in the jungle could find some ganks, but Spooks has been navigating his way around it as best he can, so falls a little bit behind, but still doing perfectly fine. Uh, bot lane has good push, resetting the lanes. They are the weaker side, you would say, in the 2v2, generally speaking, but they've been holding their own because there's no jungle intervention at all. Everything is just going, honestly, so far in this game, a pretty standard approach to it, and you're waiting for that you know, first step in a direction, and right now it looks like Spooks 
is giving it a chance. He is. He's sort of hanging around this area. Decoy's going to walk right into him, but there's going to be some CC to come down to really help there. Ray's kind of ranking away. Flash ball by Jake, but matched here by uh, by Raid. He's going to get out. And that was super curious from the side of order. The call was very clearly go for Raid. He has the teleport with his flash, so uh, so there's no actual offense summoner spells or defensive summoner spells. Maybe getting the flash of him was deemed more important for the future than off a Rakan, which is something that definitely is true when you consider how many dashes a Rakan has got. So I like that approach from the side of order. It just looked very unorthodox to watch a Zack waddle past Rakan to just threaten yeah. someone else. Zack's got a, a very long range gank, obviously, with his uh, elastic yeah. slingshot, and it gets uh, longer as he levels it up. Now, the thing with it, though, is. CC kind of relies on having two minions around or having like a champion and a minion because you need to hit something and hit the other one to get that, that slow going or the, the stun. Um, so when he sort of walked into uh, Decoy there, he didn't really have much to, to really engage him with besides just auto attacks. Yeah, and he could have maybe just forced a W away. Perhaps that could have helped the 1v2 for the other guys fighting, but at the same time, good comms, good clear comms, it seems more importantly from the order. Ooh, seem to be able to make that work. And also good avoiding of the vision here. They clearly know it was play. Spooks navigates his way around brilliantly. And whilst he's looking in bottom side, it's not really for a gank. It's just to get vision down, prevent the Zin Zhao from getting in. He may even get spotted here. Doesn't matter too much. Yep, obviously a little bit of a movement there in the mid lane. Swiffer does claw himself out. Prelis shows himself mid lane. That uh, bottom crab is taken by Zack, and he's going to move around uh, this bottom river area. This is where he's hanging. This is where he wants to put pressure on the map. Obviously, Raid has not got his flash now, but he's Ezreal. He's still pretty mobile. And during all of this time, we've had vision of the Xin Zhao going through mid lane, looking towards bot side river as well. All of the wards spotting him, so they know where Prelis is. And while Prelis has still got eyes on Spooks and junglers just seem to be mapping each other, that does leave a lot of lanes fairly isolated. Syndra in an isolated lane against Lissandra does have a pretty good time until the six kill threat point arrives, so has been doing quite a good job in mid lane, I would say Harry has been. However, the CS has been kept up by Swiffer. Whereas on the top side of the map, a very similar thing, honestly. It was a slight CS advantage for Pard, but will be after this wave, but not by a lot. And they're really just farming up towards their first big items. Yeah, it seems like both these junglers are content on just tracking each other, right? If you know where the enemy jungler is, he's not getting these surprise ganks off. And in high-level play, it's very rare you see, see kills in this early game without the jungler, without a big rotate down. These 1v1 kills are, are very unusual and very rare when they happen. And you know, the team that I have to look at the most in a game of this pace, of this really slow, methodical style of League, is Gravitas. Can they keep up with a side like Order. Three of the roster members have been together for a significant amount of time. Mm. Jake's an experienced player as well. He's been in the OPL for many years and Dream, the only real new player into the lineup, the youngest player in the lineup. I feel like Order, it's almost expected that they'll be very good at the macro communication, things like that. Placing Vision in a slow paced game to get those small wins. Gravitas, we're not sure. They're still a very young roster. They have been prone to making some on-stage errors and Whilst that's not something you want to shut them for, in a game at this pace, the small errors mean big deals. Absolutely, a little bit of trade coming in here, bot lane. The, the one objective early game we're looking at, though, is that Ocean Dragon. That Ocean Dragon uh, isn't that great in the long-term part of the game here, but if you get it for laning phase, it does help you with your trading. You can sort of trade evenly and come out yeah. ahead long-term. Early Ocean Dragons are very nice to have, for, even for mana sustained in mid lane, is when they get blue buffs all the time, maybe desynced with opposing teams as well, so... Little details, they, they are up to a great deal. Ocean Dragon is a significant yeah. early dragon. Yeah, great comms there by uh, Gravitas, actually. I saw Prelis invading the jungle, and he, he might have thought he'd see the red buff and go, but Vroom left very quickly. He went into the into the tri brush and had no vision of him, and as soon as he walked into that brush, he and Prelis backed away. It was a very odd position, but that's what happened. And this is just such a delicate dance, it feels like. Honestly, you watch this game of League, and whilst the score is stagnating, the goal is just going to stay the same, everyone's just going to be farming. You still get that feeling of tension where vision is the biggest part of the battle right now and Gravitas have got complete river control. You saw Spooks very tentatively walk in. The second he was spotted, he jumps away to safety. All of these things can cascade into a minor victory that can become a dragon and then suddenly the snowball is on. Absolutely. Harry getting his blue buff transferred. Obviously Swift is waiting for his. Although he's moving into the river. Zack is hanging out mid here. Might be looking for something here as he's hanging in this brush. Zack's engages very long and also Swiffer can follow with the claw. So Hayri might be in trouble here. Ergoth also missing, coming down the river towards mid. So the kill's on. There's the claw. Zoom comes out, does flash out, does cleanse out. 
does get away, they get both his summoners though. I felt early from Swiffer and Spooks looking Ooh. for that potential kill. Ultimate also used by Harry on the back end. Just to give him a bit of a how you go and get out of my lane type of situation there. But the blue buffs up, they want to get that as soon as possible. They could have maybe waited for Tally, but I don't think the kill would have been there regardless. There's just a cleanse and a flash available for a Syndra. You're not going to lock that one down too successfully at the moment. Yeah. You don't want to waste too much time waiting in those brushes. Obviously, every moment you wait there is time that Spooks is not clearing his jungle. Yeah, and that Preyless is. And Preyless is, yeah. And also, Swiffer might be missing some CS if we wait much longer for that. We don't quite know. They're the also hovering well. Uh, the thing you have to take away from that is Hayri was hovering his jungler's side of the middle lane, and that was furthest away from his act jump. So. If he was being super aggressive, maybe standing closer to the bot side of the lane or the middle of the lane, Zach gets easier access to that engage. And it doesn't have to be a Lissandra ult that can be cleansed and walked out of. Absolutely. So looking at his mid lane here. Now Swiffer still has his flash and his teleporter. When his ult comes back up, and you can see it in the left-hand side there, it's half off cooldown. You imagine there might be some more pressure here mid. Hayri, though, he's going to back off. Might look to reset here, get a few items, and return the lane a little bit stronger. Yeah, he's been building up a decent CS lead in the past couple of minutes as well. They were fairly even in farm, and now he's got himself an extra wave over his opponent. So that could mean an extra control order. It could just mean the refillable potion that, of course, he's picked up as a difference now. And those small things, once again, they start to mount up, but with that recall timing, maybe another yeah. turret plating for Swiffer. That's what Swiffer gets. So Swiffer didn't get the kill, got the summoners, but that kind of pressure has given him this. Now, Harry's coming back. Swiffer hasn't backed yet. Swiffer, you don't want to not match your back. You're just down items, you're down power. He's got teleport, though. He does have teleport, but uh, what is he missing? He does have cleanse. So the cleanse advantage there is used. Harry's a little bit behind now, I think, in his mid lane with Swiffer getting that turret plating. There's not no much. It's still really small. Oh, here we go. First opportunity and objective started by Preyless. It looks like Spooks is going towards a mid lane gank more than he is the objective. Yeah. From the looks of it, they want kill before objective on a no sums, uh -oh, and they are in. Up. They're going in. There's the all coming down there. Spooks jumping in. Does try and dump him back. The stopwatch comes out. He does survive for now. There's two people there. He gets CC down. Harry going to go down for first blood to Spooks. Yeah, they lock it down at the same time. Dragon is picked up. Preyless not able to assist his mid laner. And as tragic as it is for Hayri, they have to take the small victory there of a dragon. Effectively a trade to be seen by Gravitas. But the first kill's on the board. 400 gold into the pockets of Swiffer. And another plating, potentially, if he gets the demolished proc off. Yeah, that plating's going to go down. Swiffer's going to get the third plating there. Good gold. Obviously, the kill went over to Spooks. But a good uh, assist for Swiffer's going to put him up about 300 gold with that plating over Harry, actually he's got a few plating now, actually he's going to have a decent gold lead. There's three plates there, 600, 600 gold, gold. So yeah. two kills worth of advantage in the mid lane. Spooks as well, with a 500 gold lead himself, so they are doing well, the mid and the jungler. When you look at that in effective use, that's a that's an amp tome, maybe a pink ward and a couple of potions, right? That's his advantage now. That doesn't seem big, but you can turn that into something. If you keep pushing that pressure, you keep trading well, you've got the potions to do something here. Tally, the top lane here, getting a little bit aggressive on Pabu. But uh, they are going to just walk it out. These two tanks here. Uh, I'm very shocked if I ever see a San and an Urgot at this point in the game just kill each other. Then again, yeah. they're both very low. I think from this moment, it's very unlikely. At level 6, when Tally could switch his teleport maybe to Ignite, then there's a chance that the kill's there in the 1v1. But yeah. not yet. And with no significant leads, we may not see what Tally was able to do yesterday, just beating up Chief's top laner Swiper there in the 1v1 when he showed his head. Urgot was just so fed in that game, though. Yeah, Vision being swapped to the top side here. Looks like Preyless is looking at that uh, Rift Herald. That's the next uh, sort of neutral objective on the map besides the towers. Pabu here getting a great push on this top lane, getting two turret plating. That's going to be a good chunk of gold there. Decoyo getting caught out. He takes a ton of damage. Ray coming in. Now Spooks is in the middle of no man's land. There's three people here, but TP coming through. So if are looking to follow up and doesn't, it's 4v4 here. It looks like both teams are going to disengage. They just escort Spooks to safety. Passive still in hand. Didn't have his ultimate, however, so he had to just walk it out. And dodges the Ezreal Q on the backside. They get the summoners out of the support of Gravitas. Raid has to be careful the here Pabu's as well. in the top lane by himself now. He didn't teleport down, but the but Tally did. So there's another turret planning going across here. That fight looked even. This is the advantage here. And you would even consider ghosting towards lane if you're Tally, but perhaps being safe, checking the Herald first. We'll see it's being done. Oh, in the mid lane, though. Hayri getting caught out again. His summoners are not quite up again. He's going to go down to Swiffer. Of course, fighting at the Herald. Preyless is still in a whole lot of trouble here. Oh, Preyless is going to dodge the ult here. He's going to get caught out. He gets killed by the Urgot, and now they're in all sorts of trouble. Pavel's going to have to abandon it. That's going to be Rift Herald going over to order. Leashed by Preyless. Yeah, thank you very much for the leash, Gravitas. They'll take this one down very much successfully on the back of another kill in the middle lane. This slow, methodical style. Now the teleports come in. 
This is the play coming down. They need to make something happen. There's the CC flash by Dream. Jake's kind of in a bit of no man's land here. All coming through. They're going for Dream. They want the big AD carry. They're moving forward. Dream takes a ton of damage. He goes down. Jake flashes under turret and survives. Swift is looking as well. He teleports in maybe to try and help his team. If nothing else, he'll clear this wave and stop a push now. There's no and one coming down though. This is Swiffer by himself. Looking to maybe dive here. Pabu has a lot of damage. They do back away. Pabu also definitely uh, does a bit more than tickles his opponents, even yeah. though he's a full tank champion right now. There's a lot of risks in him being down in this bottom lane for such an extended period of time. You look towards topside, Tally should be able to push that turret down and take it. So that's why this need then arises for Gravitas to stay here, extend their duration in bot lane, and push it out as soon as they can. It's the first oh. turret race, but Tally should be very successful with the damage he'd already done. Had a little head start. That was a good heads up play by Gravitas, though. They were losing across the map. Three kills down, they lost to Rift Herald. They needed to get some tempo oh, again. back. again. Hayri, though, getting caught out. His flash was back up, but he's already popped it. Hayri's so low, he does get under his turret this time, though. He is getting picked on this game by order. And most importantly for Hayri, he was able to knock back Swiffer, prevent him from getting access with the ultimate, and get into that. Uh, get in range rather, so they prevent the kill from being secured. Harry, just of his own accord, very well done individually. There's only so much you can do as a Syndra into a Zach and a Lissandra, but he's trying his absolute little heart out. Yeah, we see some lane swaps coming through here from uh, Gravitas. They put San in the bot lane to defend that turret. Obviously, the tier one bot is dead on the side of, Va of Order, sorry. In the top lane, let's put uh, Ezreal there. He's teleporting Bravo. in, in fact. Dream coming through. Here comes two more. This is going to be a big fight in the bot lane. This is a 4v2. They do catch onto the AD carry. He goes down very quickly. Now, can they get onto Jake? He's trying to escape up the river. There's no one there. Oh, that's not even his teammate. That's five in the bot lane. Two kills for Gravitas. It's now three to three in kills as well. Everyone shows up from the Gravitas roster. They get to the bottom lane now. Meanwhile, trades are still happening across the map. It's a dangerous game that Order is playing, looking to trade. Eventually, they'll have to 5v5, and they are giving kills over to their opponents. While they have the gold lead, that's still giving them openings. Yeah, Mountain Dragon spawning here for Gravitas. Great timing with the bot push coming through and getting a couple of kills on the board. So that's another objective that's looking like it's going to get secured by them. But the towers, that's where Order are focusing. You saw Swiffer in the mid lane there. During that gank, gets that tier one. Now the question from Gravitar's side is they're getting the kills for the initial objectives, but if you're not getting towers, you're not catching up with that gold lead right now. Currently at 2k. So we're just hanging around. Now a question of translations. Can they turn these kills into something more meaningful? The dragons are good to have. They are worth 100 gold now. They are worth a decent amount of experience, but that gold results in item spikes, results in a better timing for team fights if they force it. Spooks definitely was just running out of timer there, it felt like, so he'll summon it in the bottom side. Yeah, obviously, but Pabu actually taking a lot of damage here from Tally. He might be forced back if they throw down a couple of people in this bot lane. Well, well they don't even just kill the turret with the... Uh, the turret should be turret. free here. Yeah, it should be a free turret. The question is, will he get a charge in the next one? They might even get that. It's hard to tell. We'll see where Tally chooses to go with this, the old ghost exhaust Ergot. Not your everyday run-of-the-mill summoners, but means that he will be the point of uh, strength for order on the map right now. He should get a second charge off, but it shouldn't be a second turret. He's got spell books, so that ghost uh, exhaust is just uh, temporary. <laughs> of course. Until he uses, I, I forgot what he took into the game. I, I think it was flash or flash teleport. Yeah. Um, so he'll get those up once he uses those spells. Which, it's just um, funny to see it, you know? Yeah. Looks like that hit does happen in the bot lane there. But the taken down. So looking across the map, it's just sort of reset slightly. People are now backing. Got three turrets down for order. They've got the outer ring. That's great for them. It's going to give them a lot of movement around the map, especially the Gravitas jungle. The Gravitas have one. They have the bot lane, but the top lane's very low. That seems like an easy one to take. And then two dragons for Gravitas versus none for order. Yeah, now's a good time to mention for those who don't remember last year and even perhaps I think the year before of the OPL, Jake and Pabu have been playing League of Legends together for a very long time. That last skirmish we saw in the bottom lane, Pabu had eyes only for the Braum, only for Jake, and was chasing him down. Yep, Spook's kind of uh, looking for something here. We'll almost turned that one around, but I think that would have been a mistake looking at uh, three people in the lane here. But just keep that in your mind. Of course, the rivalry, while it may not be there Ooh, between teams. Port, actually. Lissandra coming out of nowhere. Does pick him up. Spooks flies in. That's another kill on Hayri. Oh, they're going in mid as well. They are going in mid. There's the catch. They've got two. It's a 4v3, but two people are coming in. Look at Spooks and Spook on the side here. When they join, this is going to be a disaster for Gravitas. They catch one. Freilus is coming out. He's dead too. Pabu, he's going to try and escape, but he's stunned up on that Brawl passive. He's getting knocked down. That's going to be four kills across the board with only Raid surviving. He's tanky, but not tanky enough. He will get Jake, however, on the backside just in his undead form. But one kill does not add up to the four that Gravitas lost here, that Order gained. And now they push forwards into the middle lane. 
Syndra just continues to be caught out of position by the Zac and by the capabilities of covering crazy distances with the Lissandra of Swiffer. Absolutely. Harry is, has started the game getting picked on a bit, and you got to feel a bit sympathy for him when he uses his flash and cleanse and gets repeatedly ganked. But something like that, walking through that jungle, that's that's his own thing. He needs to be getting oh, vision in there. The he needs ward. to be being a bit safer about rotating. I respect that he's recalling, but he is on a ward, so they'll know he did. Either way, there are going to be a full reset here from Order. Tally the last one to go back to base, you would expect. Just trying to hold out that middle lane, prevent Raid from getting anything free. And with this reset, now is a very good opportunity. 18 seconds till the Baron spawns to get your vision control, to re-establish it in those areas. And this is a point, Benji, when you look at your items of all the teams and you say, who could sell something for a control ward? <laughs> Pretty much everyone's got control wards in the side of Gravitas. Is it all getting a passing grade? The only person who doesn't is Swiffer, but he's got eight stacks, and I wonder if he's just really feeling himself and wants those 10 stacks. At what point do you sell Corrupting Potion? Exactly. Uh, at the point you sell it? Yeah. What I, point, like, is now the time to do that? Like, I, at some point, the healing's basically not much, right? Yeah. It's really contextual for, like, does he need healing in the first place? At this point, I'd say probably not. But he's got a Dark Seal with it, so he might just sell them both when he does. You know? Get that massive influx of gold and an item from it. Yeah. Makes sense. Right here. Poking spooks out. This vision now is going to be very hard for Gravitas because with the outer ring down, they're able to push in the jungle and get those pink wards up that we just saw spooks put in. But you can't really do it the other side with that mid turret down because you can't rotate very quickly. One thing that does slow this game down a whole lot, though, is the Ice Wand Gauntlet Ezreal. So even if Order have the lead, they can't really siege without the Baron buff. Mm -hmm. uh, just being able to siege for Order to me looks like more of a dive scenario. Get the Zac in, pick someone off. Or catch them in rotation between waves. That's the other thing that you would be looking at trying to achieve here. So all of their vision focus, you would expect, goes towards the Baron side of the map. But then they want to get those picks first to be able to threaten further objectives. Absolutely. You can see these members hanging around this red jungle here. This is the key jungle. If Auto can get vision control of it, it makes it very difficult for Gravitas to get to Baron. On the flip side, if Gravitas remain control, they can they can slide this Baron. You can poke a team off it pretty effectively. So you see a lot of members moving up and down there, putting their pink wards in there. You can see right now there's a few wards. There's even one in Baron pit for Gravitas. So uh, for that objective to be taken, I need to really secure that. But for now, Inferno Drake is spawning. Auto have the inside track. Gravitas nowhere nearby. This looks like it's it's looked like a free one here for, for Auto. Yeah, the vision on this side of the map is very minimal uh, from Gravitas. You know, put the bare minimum there, get the Scuttle Crab. A single Trinket Ward was placed, but really they want to control the Baron side of the Rift just as much as Order do. It does result in a free objective as oh. Swiffer. Raider. We we'll almost got caught out there, but jumped over the wall in time. Very close. Very hard to lock down either of those champions. Of course, locked in for a reason. Now Gravitas will get the top lane out of turret, so they'll open up the map a bit more for themselves as a result of that turret going down. Note, they didn't get the gold because they got to run. Oh, they're engaging. Swift is coming in as well. Clone's coming down. We're going to turn this one around. Spooks is not here yet, but Jake flying up as well. The rest of the order team coming too. This is a 5v2 as the rest of the team join. That's two kills for Dream. Yeah, really tragic there from the two members of Gravitas being there for the turret. Order very quickly picked them off as they're going. Oh, they're going in 3v4. They get a ton of AoE down. Jake is super low. They're diving in after him. So, Lissandra and Zach taking a lot of damage. Zach goes into his passive form. He's going to try and reform here. His team are going to buy him time. Ray gets killed in the front line. Tally is massive doing a ton of damage. He's soaking it all up. Pabu goes down as well, and that's just going to reset Baron, but they get a kill for it. At a point like this for Gravitas, you may even be able to take that if it prevents the Baron from going down, but it doesn't look likely. It buys some time, but nothing more. They should be able to secure this one. Very good target selection and awareness from Tally in specific, knowing that if Raid is alive, the fight is still alive for Gravitas. It takes him down. That was a very curious fight. It's like, I understand poking a team like that. That Ezreal lot caught a lot of them, did a lot of good damage. But then they went in afterwards, and I'm, I'm not sure uh, the call there and if it made sense. It looked pretty good to start with, but as soon as Zach and Lissandra sort of reached that back line and they can do it very quickly, it just seemed to be an absolute disaster for uh, for Gravitas. I mean, choosing to engage at all at a point like that, you have to know the repercussions of what a Zach and a Lissandra will do to you, and that's immediately turned around. They wanted to burn the health bars of order as much as they could in one big hit, stop the Baron from being done. They chose to do it before the Baron was even started, right? So. They made the play while it was risky. It was the choice that they made for themselves, and they are made to pay for it very quickly from Order remaining composed. Absolutely. Order in a very dominating position right now in the game. It's taken them a bit to get here, 
They're uh, up 6,000 gold. Dragon-wise, it's a very complicated message there with uh, one Inferno for Auto and then the Ocean Mountain for Gravitas. So uh, the Inferno very good in team fights, but Mountain will help them with the Siege if they can get to that point in the game. And obviously, tower-wise, Auto have taken down four, so that tier two mid is dead. Looking to rotate around here. This bot lane turret here getting sieged now. Hover doing his best to hold, getting flipped over. The teams come flying in. Looking Very to get engaged. engaged. Here. Hover goes in as well. They get again. Urgler, he's dead. Looking to turn around. Can they get out of free? Jake on the front line here. Now he's a bit far forward. Flashes over the wall. Does escape. Teleports oh, in. Teleport coming in. Dream oh. on the bottom side. What's Dream at the bottom here on Kaiser? He's doing a ton of damage. A ducked backwards, but Zinzao's already dead. His corpse stays on the ground there. Slipper. They're flying in. Slipper does a ton of damage. Kaiser in the back, blowing them all up. They're diving forward. That's two more. Dream is tearing them alive. Just Pabu remains under this turret. Has order clean house. They should be able to take Pabu down here as well. It will take them a little bit of time. They're even going to go for the turret before they go for Pabu. Looks like Spook's just going to stop the recall, really, and they're going to continue to push. This will be never-ending. We may as well watch the turret. <laughs> and they will take this down. Very big from Swiffer, but it enables Dream. And that's the sacrificial team play that you love to see from a side like Order. Absolutely. Um, Spook's there just delaying a little bit. They're going to get that bottom inhibitor. They're looking at this mid turret. So they're backing away. Kralis is really up. really is never ending. Wow, is Pabu going to lose this fight? Oh yeah, he's win. not going to win it. Well, he's not going to win it, but like, is anyone going to come and help him in time? Dream coming on over. They want to give it over. Oh, he stopwatches. He better be able to afford a gargoyle stone plate. Well, he's going to go down there. That is uh, not ideal. Although Raid now, he's got a lot of speed. He's looking to chase off, but Tally just steps in front. Suddenly Raid's like, I don't want a piece of that. He's going to back away. <laughs> the second you see Tally on your screen, you've got to run away. And we'll see this fight again. Pabu's the one who kicks it off after Tally flips him and says, we're going for the kill, we're going for the fight. And it looks very good for them with the first pick. But then, of course, you see the turnaround from Order. At this point, Spooks, he actually hits a flash elastic slingshot to cover distance as the teleport's coming in. So he's able to lock him down. That's kill number one. And then Swiffer throws himself into the back line, gets three people with his W, and just gives free access for Dream to ult in and lock them all down. Swiffer dies for that play, but what he does is he gives order the team fight, gives them an inhibitor by sacrificing himself, and that's a sign of an experienced player. Absolutely. Now the gold lead is blown out. We're at uh, 8,000 gold right now. What's 6,000 for that fight? The bottom inhibitor is down. Gravitas is slowly slipping out of this game. They need to make something happen here for them, or they need to capitalize on a mistake here from order to really get themselves back in it. Obviously, objective-wise, we have a dragon spawning. That's not a very big objective now. It's saving the base that Gravitas need to focus on. Yeah, there's no Baron buff right now, however, as that has subsided. So while their push is still good, they may be able to draw the line here, Gravitas, and say you will not pass this point. I would expect it's this tower here. They've got wave clear. They should be okay for the moment, which means dragon may just be taken as a free objective. And then probably leading in towards the second Baron of the game, which would be the closing Baron if order get it. Absolutely. If the if, if thing is, if Order get this next Baron in two minutes, they probably close the game with it. If Gravitas get it, that's a stabilizing Baron. They might get a turret or two, but they aren't breaking bases. They're not getting oh, no. big wins. They're trying to catch up in that gold lead. They would be resetting the map. Absolutely. We'll see if they can get it. That's probably where they'd be looking, right? It's coming up pretty soon. Game's not going to end before this Baron spawns, uh, unless a drastic mistake comes out. This Ocean being cleaned up by Dream. Probably more interested in the 100 gold at this point in the game. And it is a known fact in League of Legends that if you take inhibitors away from your opponents but you can't close the game with it, all you are doing is funneling the money. And so there is a lot of money that can start going into the pockets of Gravitas and the Baron that we highlight. If they can find a way to secure that one, even if it's just a steal from Praelis, then maybe that does help stabilize the game and to give gold into their pockets through the supers that are down here being cleared now by Raid. But I just don't feel like even with the money that they're getting, their composition can keep up too well with Order's Kaiser that is now ridiculously far ahead. Yeah, you, I agree, you do get a little bit of extra gold, but you do lose access to things like your jungle. The enemy team can take that away from you, so it, it's contextually interesting how uh, a team comes out with that. Obviously, uh, they're putting Raid in that bot lane, is like, okay, we want Raid to get some gold here. We want him to catch up in this game, because Dream right now is 7-2. Oh, Pabu is caught out, he's looked over. In fact, for the front line here, Zack is caught out, taking a lot of damage. Brook's gonna go down, he's gonna pop into his form. Dream just, uh, not Dream, sorry. Pabu's gonna try and run away as well. He's gonna get a Tally runs in, massive fear on the team. Dream. And Order are swiping over this Gravitas lineup. Backline here, Praylis 
is going to try and take out Dreamy's dive right into the base. He's looking to do a ton of damage, and he's able to take out one. Almost gets two. Raid does shut him down. Here comes the Zack in the back line. He's looking to close off Raid. He does get CC'd. Looking to slow down this fight. It is a 3v3 right now. Look at the Spooks. Spooks on the side. Here's the problem. When this tower get dies, health, Raid. they have more room to move around. Raid is going to escape. It's going to be a two for two in overall. He probably could have just queued the minions or even gone back to base. They still hold the fort. However, Dream is dead and Tally is gone. And whilst that didn't look too great in the end for Gravitas, Order still get the turret. You can see they've got damage. You can see the Pabu takes such a long time to kill that they are able to go toe to toe even from this deficit and not come out too worse from it, though still losing. They do. That fight, I reckon, could have gone a lot worse for Gravitas had it uh, happened a different way. Pabu did eventually die. He looked much tankier than Spooks did. That's a good sign for them, obviously, if they want to do that similar trade. Spooks won't have his passive anymore. So, uh, very curious. That was that was not good for Gravitas, but to me, that's signs of life, right? It shows they can do things in this game to stay in it. There is fighting spirit. Hello. Oh, Spook's getting caught out there, actually. He's been spotted. Kralis, uh... Oh, actually, Decoy's coming in. Oh, now, Decoy's in the wrong spot. Give him a target to dash to. Look on the mini-map. Where are the team rotating from? Looks like they're both coming around. This is a... Wow, this is a weird fight in the jungle here. Everyone's kind of split vision. off. It's entirely for vision. You know, the people that are fighting are Spooks and Jake against Kralis and Decoy. No one there is a big threat. They're all just fighting to get some wards down on the map. Everyone else clearing waves, easy as you like. Yep. Bit of damage thrown out there with Ezreal ult. Not very useful, very easy to get those off in fights. Yeah. Better to use at range. And speaking of, it's a full AD Ezreal build. He hasn't gone towards the second tier item like a lot of other Ezreals in the world. Okay, Vision's been choked out here. Gravitas moving in. Baron has been started. This is the fight here that Gravitas need to win to stay in this game. Order looking to close down. Zack in the back line. Massive jump. He catches the team out. They're getting knocked all over the place. Order are walking over Gravitas. They're getting wiped. Dream got a triple kill and Pabu escapes. Yeah, three for Dream and it's an absolute massacre. He's going to be interrupted and killed as well, Pabu. It might take a while, but the game may even just end from this kill. Absolutely big kill. Pabu's getting taken out. That's uh, four kills there for Dream. And the ace, he is 12-3 and three on Kaisa. We haven't really seen much of him in this game, but he's been popping off behind the scenes here whilst Zack jumps in and gets the damage. Order of ace Gravitas. They're walking towards the Nexus to end the game. The definition of consistency, it seems like Dream is in this team. When Order plays well, he does reap the benefits of that. They get the victory here. And it was a clean result in the end for Order, shaping up with a big 2-0 week. Both towers gone down, Nexus taken. Order get the 2-0 week after a disastrous week one, bouncing back. Now 2-2. Two two. You've got to feel good after a week like that for Order. Their first week was not the ideal result, but you give everyone a week to warm into the OPL for sure. They've really found their footing here. Good drafting, Tally still on the Urgot doing well. Spooks, he got the Zack. The champion that he's known for as well. He loves the maybe he doesn't love the big I don't know person. <laughs> Absolutely. That manning is screen there, that. Dream. He had a fantastic game actually. Uh, on the Kaiser up until this week, I honestly looked at him because he's facing FBI, who's had a great split so far. He's popping off the bombers, right? And it's kind of like, well, they've replaced this solid AD carry with Dream. But you start to see a little bit in this game, right? He has the potential to be a fantastic AD for this team. Big shoes to fill, as you mentioned, but for sure, I mean, he had a very good game. The thing that stands out to me, however, if I was to pick a moment, was how the team enabled him mm. to do his work. It's almost like Dream had the easiest job, even though he was the AD carry, because there's people left, right, and center crowd controlling for him, enabling him to get into the back line and do his work. Absolutely. You see the handshake on your screen now. Great sportsmanship by the teams here. Bit, bit of hugs going around, bit of happiness. You see Dream there, very excited. But uh, Gravitas, though, they're still doing well in this league. Both these teams are now 2-2. Two and two. So, you know, four games down, uh, 17 more best of ones to go. A lot of leagues lot. to be played out. It's a lot of leagues. It is a lot of leagues to be played out, right? Uh, these guys will rematch in a few weeks as well. I'm excited for that. But now we're sort of in the point where we're like, okay, well, these teams are all good. And on this day, anyone could have taken it. It just makes, like, tier listing teams so much harder. You know, there's been a recurring theme in talking about who belongs where, but Order with this 2-0 well and truly have pushed themselves back up from that week one performance. They've bounced back with this redemption, and now they are pushing once again for the top of the ladder. Absolutely. Well, you've heard enough from us. I'm going to throw it over to a couch that has one very excited uh, person, one probably not so happy person, and Nick Boy. I'm the excited one. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Uh, look, that was a very boring game for like 10 minutes, and then <laughs> it just, it, I mean, what a wipe. Yeah, uh, 
I guess like so like just some background. We've we've really worked at the moment on making the early game less volatile. Mm -hmm. uh, for anyone that was a fan of, fan of order last year, like I, I think we're a good team fighting team. I think that you know obviously losing FBI is a blow to that regard, but I mm -hmm. think we can still be a good team fighting team. And I think that if we have these good early games where you know we can play towards our win conditions, that we will be better throughout the mid late game than you know a lot of people. And I, I think that. That shows that sticking to the game plan can work when we draft well. And stylistically, like that is what happened this game. It's like Zin's out into a Zach. Zach realistically shouldn't be getting things done before he's got at least three points in his E, level five, level six. But as soon as Spooch and Swiffer, very long time they've been playing together, they were picking on the newcomer and Harry, Harry mm. in the mid lane. That's a very hard matchup, I think. Once you get past the early stages, like Liss Zach has so much long range kill, kill potential. And as soon as he has to blow an early flash, an early cleanse, like, they just kept repeating, going into the mid lane. The Zin didn't really realistically get much done early, and then Spooks came online, and from that point, it was kind of an outscale game. So Order did play a very non-volatile early game, and for these two drafts, how they matched up, like, that is that is exactly what they wanted. But Prelist did get some things done in the early game, right? Mm -hmm. So Prelist was able to get double scuttle, actually yeah. had a really cool clear where he did uh, Raptor Camp on Zin Zhao, which you see he skipped a lot on Zin yeah. Zhao, actually. So, I, you know, he tweeted that he was going to, like, path well, so I was, <laughs> I was watching his tweet, uh, uh, watching his uh, kind of pathing early game, and I thought he did a good job. I think that the area that people fall down sometimes with, like, defensive lanes is, like, they don't ever, like, look for that opportunity. And after the first time that... Uh, Harry got ganked. Like, you knew it was coming in. He had burnt double summoner mm, spells. Mm. I would have loved to see Prelist, you know, clear one side, just sit mid. Just like, sit, sit behind yeah, yeah, his yeah. mid laner, uh, you know, try and get something done. But I think that that is, you know, a little bit on Harry as well. And I think that this is where, mm. as a mid laner, he'll get better because you'll start calling for it. Hey, dude, yeah. if you don't sit behind me, I'm probably just going to yeah. die in, like, 30 seconds. So I think that that's just something that I'd like to see Prelist add to his game. Because it's also a cool play if that happens. Because in a sense, it's like that... Like, those things shouldn't be happening. Like, the Syndra shouldn't have to blow those summoners yeah. early. But if, it, if you do, and then Order is looking for the repeat, and then Zin is there, like, that is... that. They, then you're looking at that gank, like, wow, Order was so greedy, like, going for this. They knew the Zin's out, like, is stronger, yada, yada. Yeah. And it's, like, a huge swing play. But, of course, didn't play out that way. And once Order had the lead, it was a very successful, a very slow closeout. They didn't greed. They got to team fights. They got some very nice flanks off. So their vision control... Like, around that last Baron pit, Swiffer came from the bottom side. Spooks came from, I think literally the red buff and they just came flying in from both angles and that's just scary as soon as you get behind, like those champions get behind a team you saw how quickly they just blew up and i think that you know this has now turned the league completely on its head if we're going to talk about like repercussions from that game because yeah. order had a disastrous week one on paper but realistically their game against bombers was actually very very close mm. and now avan is much better than what people had mm, like mm. initially thought they were so technically order has lost to the top two teams in the league right now Beaten Chiefs and beaten Gravitas, which would round out a lot yeah. of people's at least top six, if not top five, with how poorly Mammoth are playing. And on the flip side, you know, I think that. Would you, are you going to say something like well, that? No, no, I, I mean. Mammoth are playing poorly at the yeah, moment. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, 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 they are. But I'm like, you're putting Mammoth below Gravitas? No, I'm saying that either, like, I'm saying that there is probably a top six because I don't think yeah. you can say Mammoth are decisively better yeah, okay, than okay, Gravitas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I think that... And also, that does wonders for Gravitas, right? Because they've only lost against good teams as well right yeah. now. It's not like these teams are dropping against, you know... Yeah. You know well, you're also simultaneously two. calling Mammoth kind of bad. Or like... Well, not, not, not bad, But then... But we got... Gravitas got... Spanked by Mammoth. Yeah, absolutely. So it's like, yeah. Well, I, like, I think that's in my best of one, yeah. I think in best of one, this is going to happen, right? <laughs> yeah, so oh, absolutely. What I'm saying right now is it's yeah. kind of like Bombers and Avant, arguably, at the top. Mm. And then just a pool of teams in the middle. Yeah, which it's our like team's an amalgamation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With probably Mammoth and yeah. maybe Avant. Uh, sorry, maybe uh, Chiefs. It's just Frank and Ladder. <laughs> it, it is. It's Frank and Ladder. I mean, the OPL is just Frank and everything. Uh, and here's a person who was put together from various body parts. It's Swiffer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Nick Boy. I'm joined by Midlater for the Order Team. Swiffer, how are you doing? You feel good about after that win? Yeah, really good. I'm glad that my, they found a replacement for my nose in the garbage pile. That was really good, <laughs> so I'm really happy with that. Fantastic. Um, they were actually talking a little bit about Mammoth there a little bit. Do you have yep. any thoughts on that? Because I saw you listening in on that. Um, yeah, no, I think Mammoth are pretty good. I just thought that maybe um, from from... What I've seen of them and from playing against them, I think that they're really, really like not bad at all. I think they're pretty good. Okay. Um, I just think that they've had just a rough couple of weeks, and I think AV probably surprised them. Yeah. Um, and that's that's prob that's that's it. I mean, AV surprised all of us. So, yeah. Yeah. That's about it. Let's talk about this game a little bit. Obviously, yep. um, you in the mid lane with uh, Spooks 
shut down Hayri very hard in that mm -hmm. game. Was that the game plan going in, or did you sort of react to how the game played out? Um, as soon as we locked in Syndra early, I mean, sorry, Liss early, I knew, like, well, there was a counter pick coming in because you can't ban them all out. Yeah. Um, like the Galio thing yesterday as well. But the, the point of picking stuff like that is that your mid game's insane. And in conjunction with, like, picking Zach, uh, like, blind, meant that we knew that we couldn't really contest mid early on at all. But uh, it meant that if we got to kind of like around level six, level seven unscathed, then we would just like take over the 2v2, I thought. Um, and he actually played really, really well in yeah. the early laning phase. His like skill shot accuracy was on point. I saw a few of those trades that were sort of yeah. trading very well into you. Oh, yeah. That's like Syndra just definitely like just outranges Liss. And okay. so like you can't really retaliate because usually your combo is to go in proc aftershock, et cetera. But yeah. if Zin Zhao's there, you just die. So. You just have to kind of cop it for a while, and then and then like everything turns on its head after the first teleport back. Fair enough. You guys took over that game very quickly, and actually, sort of around the 22 minute mark, you got that first like decent lead. Did you feel like you're in control after that point of the game? Were there any moments where you're sort of like, oh, we need to be really careful around this? I think it was as soon as I got a lead in mid lane, I knew that I could dictate the pace of the game. So I was never flustered like after that point or anything. And the only thing I tried to do was just um, remain calm and positive. So yeah, that's kind of. That's kind of it. We knew that the plays would come to us eventually. Like, we didn't really need to set anything up except for, like, objectives. Like, that's it. If they wanted to defend it, we would kill them. If they didn't want to defend it, we would take it and set up the next one. So, yeah. Fair enough. Well, you've, uh, for my last question, uh, you guys had a not great week one, but, mm. like, as explained, it could have been against some good teams. Um, <laughs> was the mood in the house kind of okay this week? Were you a bit stressed? And do you think that impacted how you performed this week? Um, yes. <laughs> after, after going down 0-2, especially... Again, like, because I don't think we expected to lose to AV, and then we kind of were like 50 50 with Bombers. Mm -hmm. But so the loss against AV was pretty shattering. And then Bombers was kind of a redemption almost, in that I think that they're kind of, they're probably better than us at the moment. But like to take them that far it's was fine. Game, yeah. And then for the week, it was, it was kind of stressful. Like most of the week was, um, a bit up and down, like scrim results weren't the best or anything like that by any means. But uh, yeah, no, I'm just really happy that we managed to kind of pull it out at the end here. Fair so enough. Yeah. Well, thank you very much and congratulations on your 2-0 week. Thank you. And hopefully you do well in the future. Uh, for now, I'm going to send it back to Nick Boy, who's got another assorted couch segment. It's just me. It's just you. Yeah, hey, it's it's just you. We the... did swap. You swap spots. Yeah, I'm, I'm just shuffling around. Just mixing it up. Yeah. Speaking of mixing it up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. What a smooth segue. Because <laughs> mm. I'll tell you what. You guys really screwed me over last week with our Procasso segment. Nailing every single one. Yeah. Sometimes before I could even finish the introduction to no, the, next, the, the, yeah, the, yeah. the next body part. So, is it going to be better? Lauren, social media guru and I, mm. have uh, stepped up our game this week. So we're going round two on Procasso. Okay. And we have created... Some real freaks. <laughs> uh, so were we on Procasso last yeah, time we as well? Were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's the so same. Okay. This is this is we the had spawn last time as well coming in. Yeah, this is the redemption for me uh, in this scenario, so you've made and this really one. the redemption for Lauren, who was the real failure in, in that segment <laughs> last week. Uh, so what we've done this time is we've created a face out of different pro player body parts. So <laughs> no. uh, let's take a look at the first one. Uh, oh! Oh my god! <laughs> wow! What? So wow. okay. Oh, the different eyes. Is as this? Well. Hold on. Is this Chippy's head? I will tell you that it is a head and hair is the same person. Yes. You've got a left eye, a right eye. Yep. Mouth and nose yeah, are yeah, yeah. all separate. <laughs> so, so <laughs> geez, who this looks... do we have? I want to say something, Nip Boy, because when you intro this, you did said, you call me Nip Boy? <laughs> Nip Boy. Okay, just you can be sure. Nip Boy if you want to be Nip Boy. When you introed it, you were like, "Oh, we've made up their faces, boy. different body parts." Yeah. After I checked yesterday, I kind of expected five legs to be on their face. <laughs> no, that would I, I, I okay. Well, I've never seen an OPL player's legs, so I don't even know if apparently the answer would be AV. Okay, that, so, so I'm. It's Chippy's head. I'm pretty sure that's Chippy's haircut. He's on your team. Is well, that yeah, Chippy's haircut? Like that is his haircut. Yeah, like but I don't know if there's someone else that no, has his haircut. Well, the head and hair are the same person. So the yes. ears aren't out of this. It's just that that is all attached. Correct. It's just eyes, nose, and mouth. I'm going to tell you. It's Chippy's head. Okay, okay. So we got one. I reckon. 
the smartest way to do it is you're looking at the mouth. Who has a moustache? Is that is the left eye swiper? I just want to quickly say, yes. she boy in the chat yes. says, first time watching OPL, WTF is going on. Yes, that is. Yeah, that's a dot. Swiper. What that's did you say? Left, eye. left, left eye swiper. Well, correct. This, that like yes. our left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Well, the viewers have the same left. They're not looking. Right. Oh, true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's my, not clue like looking at it. my clue for swiper was he has a low low pain threshold. Apparently, <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> I like that. I'm pretty sure the mouth is Balkan. Interesting. You, you would so? be incorrect. Oh, okay. Balkan. Who has a mustache? Yeah, that's a good question. Because like, it's not it's not Order Jake. It's nope. not no. Spooks. Nope. It's who has like a. It is someone who is new to the OPL. Oh. Okay. So, Legacy, does anybody have a moustache on Legacy? I'm pretty sure no. Chaz, no. Bottom lane, no. Is it crazy? Guts, no. Crazy? No, no, no. Crazy doesn't have it one. It is not okay. crazy. Gun and then has got a little one, but I don't know if that... That doesn't look, look like a no, Guncrab moustache. No, 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 no. And then... Uh, they are on the Direwolves. Oh, okay. So, is it... Andrew? It no. is Andrew. Oh, yeah, okay. okay it okay. is Andrew's yeah, yeah, mouth yeah, yeah. and moustache. Okay. All six okay. hairs. Oh, a mouth and mustache. Okay. Can we get okay. the picture back up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want to see. One. So you've got hair, you've got chippies, you've got swiper left eye, you've got Andrew mouth, we've got nose and right eye. Is So nose and right eye left. Yeah, is the nose Swiffer? No. Just because it's big. No, it's <laughs> <laughs> and it's not Swiffer's nose. No, okay. it's not Swiffer's nose. <laughs> um, I'm genuinely clueless. I'm going to say Belkan. Hid. Uh, he'd done one says turn it off. Um, <laughs> we did. Who did we you just say so? Did. Who did you say? Uh, incorrect. I have Can no we have idea. a clue for the, the no nose? According to his Twitter profile, his DMs are open, ladies. Oh, and it's an OPL player. <laughs> I don't think yep. that narrows it down at all. That, no. Uh, just um, quietly. Oh, he Jets, plays ADC. Okay. What? Four. Oh, okay. Well, no, 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 no. no. Let's, let's just run down the here? eighty carries, right? Just so you have gun crab. Like, yeah, I don't yeah. think it's gun crab. Nah. I don't think it's raise. Because, like, is it? It could. Be, it could be dream. Yeah, it could be Rays dream absolutely schnoz. isn't going to have DMs or open ladies. Absolutely not. No, does and it then, say that? Or well, that, no, that's what his bio says on Twitter. Yeah. Raise is not going to have that. FBI. Oh, wow. Okay. No. Um, Praedith? Raid. Praedith. 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 Yes. Correct. Okay. That. Yeah. 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 We would have got there. Okay. Yeah, by Eventually. listing all yeah. of the by ADC players in the OPL. Congratulations, Bryce. You, <laughs> yeah. you picked Woo. it. Hell yeah. Uh, and then finally, we've got the right eye. I am genuinely clueless. I want to say gun crab. It is interesting. Can we bring it back up? Yeah, let's yeah, bring let's it back have... up. Because there are, two, there are two things about this. It's interesting uh, that you uh, completely stumped by this. Because surprise, Bryce, it's your eye. No. Um, <laughs> uh, and um, Rusty... You uh, describe this person as someone who tries his absolute little heart out. <laughs> <laughs> is it you? Harry? Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is Harry. Okay. Harry. It is Harry. Harry as Harry the right Kane. eye. So that is our. That is our Frank. Do you want another one? Because yeah. we made two. Yeah, yeah. Because the second one, the first one looks like a, a, a real, I guess like a real person in some ways. The second one to me is far more disturbing. Can we this, bring up the this second? first one? Is like a real person who's been punched in the face on the left side and it hit a bit of the nose. Well, the, well, if you look at the second one, mm -hmm. it's like a real person who got punched oh, in the face oh on the right side. Oh my side. god! <laughs> okay. Oh <laughs> lord, that is scary. <laughs> what is? <That's> incredible. <laughs> oh my lord! Remember Tommy better. Lee Jones as Two Face? No, it's it's a bit of that. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Um, I forgot you were like twelve years old. Okay, <laughs> what? That continue. Forever. I, I, it gets better the more you look okay. at it. Okay, that's is the that, thing. Is it chat, chat is going is off. Is it like cupcakes? That. Head? This is horrifying. Yes. Is it? Well, is it's cupcakes head? Well, a I think it's out of OPL players. So, but he's obviously so, coach. So this one, like, this one changes up a little bit because okay. I will tell you okay. in this one. There is a coach, and it is Cupcake. Okay. Congrats. Okay. Uh, and there is also a sub. Oh, that oh. makes it oh. so much harder. Unless yeah. it's like one of Rusty's subs, because they're not actually subs. Yeah, they're yeah, subs. Yeah, Sibyl and Swag, like they're... It's not starters. one of Rusty's subs. Okay, okay. so you've well, got the hair. It is Cupcake's head. Okay, can we have another look? This is... That is, yeah, that's Cupcake's head. Get okay, it's who's disgusting. happy? Who actually mouth, Yeah, mouth is the e should be the easiest. <laughs> it's not. I have... Absolutely no idea about any anything else. None of my players smile. Can we ask? Is the is the sub 
the which, smile? Yeah, which part is the sub? Uh, is that a fair no, question? No, the sub is the left eye. Oh, that's impossible! <laughs> <laughs> that's ridiculous. The sub is um, the like the blandest part dream of Dream smiles, the... right? Dream, yeah, it is dream smile, I think. It is dream yeah. smile. Oh, okay. I mean, oh, yeah. it, it would have been easy because Dream didn't have much to smile about until this weekend. So that's why, obviously, <laughs> Dream's uh, got we a haven't seen smile. it that much. Uh, yeah, okay, so you've got up. the hair is cupcake, the mouth is dream. Uh, my clue for dream was he has the hair of an 18th century musician. <laughs> I think it's luscious. Uh, let's get the picture back up because you've got left eye, which is the sub. You've got okay. right eye, and you've got the nose. Give us a clue, clue for the right eye. For the right eye. Right yeah. eye. Uh, okay, so I would say that Bryce would have the most opinions about this player. Decoy, who is on his team. Ah. Oh. Okay. Correct, Amundo. There we go. There go. Support well, for Gravy no. Boys. See, the problem with this is his eye is open, and Decoy never has photos with his <laughs> eyes open. So there was no way we were getting that one. <laughs> That's true. There's just no way. Uh, chat saying Tally's nose. Uh, no, Uncle, that is not correct. Uh, and Migs Brizer says pin the tail on the player, and that's kind of what this is. Yeah. Uh, so we're looking yeah. for left eye, and we're looking for nose. So left eye is the sub. Oh, I don't know any subs. Off the top of my head. Uh, this person has a name that shares... An, uh, have you, anyone here familiar left with eye. Curb Your Enthusiasm? No. 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 Oh, right. <laughs> well, that's, that clue's never going to work then. Uh, I'll just tell you because I don't think you're going to get it. Left no. eye. Oh, well, sub for legacy. Ah, uh, blind turkey, is it? Sub. Sub. Tarvin? I don't know. No, it's crazy. Crazy? crazy. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. He's yeah. not a sub. Well, he's made sub. Oh, that's yeah, so yeah. misleading. Yeah. Well, sub. Oh. Sub. Oh. Eh. What? All right. No? No. No, no he's no. made roster. He's no. a well, he was officially listed as a sub. No? Oh, in the contract database? Yeah. Then he's a sub. There you but go. But like, then. he's made roster. Okay, sure. But sure. also, yeah, okay. All right, cool. But yeah. you were never going to get it anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, okay, if, okay. If his picture was right there. Yeah. What have yeah, we so got? Finally, we're, we're, only mis- we're only missing the nose. Mm. The nose on this freaky, freaky boy. <laughs> <laughs> the more you look at it, it can't, like, I'm normalizing to this face. You're like, you know yeah, what I, mean? I guess that's the human condition, right? Yeah. Because I because I feel like every time I walk into the studio, when I look at your face, it's not good for me to feel like I want to vomit. So my body has normalized to seeing you every single day. Bryce's nose actually is different whether he has glasses on or no glasses on. Is it? Yeah, absolutely. Why? Because my glasses hide the fact that I actually have a big nose. Yeah. But that's nobody that's knows. It. You kind of right. look like it kind of looks like when you take your glasses off, the nose should come with it. It's like <laughs> definitely it's like, not bright. Like clown glasses. Yeah. <laughs> we, okay, so we only have the nose left. I'll give you a clue. This person was in the last Procasso segment. Like from last week. <clears throat> okay. Um, we had only we had Sybil, we had Nick Boy in an AV jersey. Correct. We had I've only said this player's name three times now. Oh. Only. It's only. Only. It's only. only. Congratulations. Oh, there we go. There you go. And this is what it looks like if Cupcake, Crazy, Decoy, Only, and Dream, through the magic of science, somehow had... It's an awesome heterochromia. Oh, baby. Yeah. Uh, now, just very quickly before we move on. By the way, congrats to Loz for making that because that was terrifying and very well done. <laughs> um, just the only woo was her as she walked out the door. Um, before we move on, next segment. You know how yesterday we were talking about the fact that I want to learn jungle? Okay. Yeah. For the next seg, we're going to do a thing called Nick Learns League, where you nominate a jungle uh, champion for me to learn everything I can over the course of the next game. Okay. And then when we come back for the next seg break, uh, I get quizzed on this player by all of you mm. and see how many answers. Okay, so someone that's like a champion that they're playing that's jungling? Or no, 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 cha- any... no. Any champ, any jungle champion. You just okay. pick one that you want me to learn all about over the course of the Are next game. Are we picking game. right now? Yeah, you're picking right now. Oh, yeah. A Moomoo. Uh, a I would. A Moomoo? A Moomoo. Best song for the song competition, I by the way. I was going to say, I know he has a good song. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm happy with a Moomoo. A Moomoo? All right, I'm going to learn everything I know about I, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed because I would have loved to hear Nick say, I love when the grass is fluffy between my toes, like Ivan, but that's just not going to happen. So I've claimed it. But All right, there, you go. <laughs> there you go. You've got to do that. All right, let's move He's on because we do <laughs> have another game of League of Legends to play. And unfortunately, it doesn't feature any of the freaks that we just saw. Uh, this game is between Bombers and Chiefs. Mm. This is an, another potential banger. Uh, let's take a look at the spicy tips who picked two because it didn't go too well for myself, Bryce, or Pyra for mm-hmm. that last game. But Bryce, it is all hanging on this one for yes. you. Yes. So this is my redemption. If Chiefs win, then I equalize. And then wait, hold on. If that happens, do we all eat a chili or does no one eat a chili? Because uh, wait, no, then no, then Jake. No, because Nick's double wrong, 
and Pyra's double wrong. Yeah, yeah, okay, sorry, sorry. Okay, I'm so just... So it'll just um, be another Nick Pyra yeah, around. Yeah, yeah, okay. Just <laughs> so Again, let's, yeah. let's make sure that doesn't happen. <laughs> uh, and the people who are going to make sure that doesn't happen are the Bombers. So, uh -huh. Rusty, can you run, run us through the Bombers lineup? Absolutely. You've got Coach Westonway still there in the background. Mimic is the top laner for the team with Balkan, two Koreans there as well. Roma is your mid laner, FBI and Rogue, the old order bottom lane, playing together. And the Bombers mm -hmm. looking like an absolute powerhouse. Yep, the only team left undefeated so far. Uh, Chiefs are going to want to try and put a dent in their armor here, but they've just been looking pretty good. All their victories, you know, they've had a couple of very, very convincing ones. They've had some close games, mm -hmm. but... But overall, they're probably looking like a lot of people's like top tips right now. I think so, for mm -hmm. sure. And they are going up against the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is the Chiefs lineup. Yep, and I'm just going to leak a secret right now. Vault, unfortunately, he had a bit of a misstep with a water bottle upstairs, so he's had to borrow one of my shirts, you know? So everybody, you got to call him out when he's pacing behind the Chiefs, literally right now. Yep. Yep, he's, he's not he's, even wearing his shirt. He's just spilled water everywhere. But collusion? I don't know. Yeah, okay, I, I don't know. But big sweep swiper in the top lane. <laughs> Only the man whose nose was on that Franken person we picked up before in the jungle. Claire, Raze, and Ayla rounding up the rest of this roster, and they had a very, very close loss to order yesterday. Pulled out some tricky things. This is a team that is happy to give the enemies their priorities and counter pick. Mm -hmm. That was the vein into the Galio. So they like doing weird stuff and, and kind of uh, experimenting a bit. So interesting to see how they match up those Bombers. I'd like to see more standard stuff today mm -hmm. against a team like the Bombers. I think it's okay to try and have the Galio counter pick, you know, with the vein there. But I don't think they'll go to those lengths two games in a row. I mm -hmm. think they will just, you know, slow it down, reassess themselves and go back to as standard as they can. I'm absolutely looking forward to this game. Unfortunately, I won't be able to pay attention because I'm reading all about Amumu. But if you <laughs> want to be distracted as well, you can check out our Twitter page where you can watch FBI's POV stream of this game. And let's move it along now to the main event with Spawn and Benji. Thanks, Nick Boy. I'm joined by Jake Spawn Tiberi for, I think, honestly, the game I was looking forward to most coming into this week. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, coming into